Brought to you ad free thanks to all of our wonderful patrons you can get tons of exclusive content and help us keep the show going by joining at patreon.com slash shonen flop and welcome to shonen flop chibi first impressions mini episode where we talk about the first chapter of the series that we'll be covering in depth next week with our guest amber from the skull tenders podcast oh yeah Ooh, spooky Ooh, spooky 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 scary D and D. yes exactly Exactly. Yeah, I'm Jordan, and with me today, as usual, is my lovely co-host, David. Say hi, David. Hi. Wow, oh, yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty muted this time. Uh, what's, what series are you covering? Giving you a real short response, right? Oh, because the series we're coving <laughs> today is uh, it's only eight chapters, and what series is that? The shortest not mini series to ever run in Shonen Jump. Ah, uh, it doesn't feel short. <laughs> it really fucking did not. <laughs> did not. <laughs> what is this series, David? We're covering Chagcha. I don't know why I keep inserting an end into the name of this series. And honestly, I couldn't give a fuck because this was terrible. Spoiler alert. I think it's Chagetcha. I don't fucking know. Chagetcha. I'm, I'm gonna Chagetcha, Maxi P, for telling us to read this. I'm a no, I'm just kidding. This is this is a fun one to read. Oh god, yeah, fun. Yeah, so tell us about it, Jordan. So this is written by Sawai Yoshio, who I believe also did Bo 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 Bo. Yes, and he made this after that. Jesus. Ah, oh, that's sad. Uh, but this series ran September 13th, 2008 to November 1st, 2008. Not even like three months. Not even two months. Yeah, eight fucking chapters. Yeah, eight fucking chapters, one volume. Oh my god, it's fucking... Uh, let's get into the plot summary. Yeah, let's get into that fucking plot summary. So, part of this plot summary, the first things I wrote were, Dude, I don't know, and okay, I'll try. Yes, I was really proud of you. So that should give you an example of uh, me trying to summarize how little actually happens in this fucking chapter. Yeah. It's like 50 pages long. Gouda Tokyo is a big city filled with Yankees, which is a Japanese term for a kind of delinquent. There's apparently a billion different kinds of delinquents in Japan. Like, these are simply one of them. Of the Yankees, the Dragon Ninjas of Gorilla High are the worst. And that is Gorilla, like the uh, Che Guevara Gorilla, you know, like. Yeah, not spelled like the animal. It was a little surprising. Not the animal, no. They're causing mass destruction on, like, a wide level. They fuck around on a train until they run into a huge dude with a giant poop shield here to see his parents after two years. His name is Chagacha. Chagacha fucks some more shit up until he runs into Masoto, his underclassman, Popcorn David. (laughs) <laughs> Chagacha shows Masoto how Gorilla High forces weak high schoolers to eternally float down a river of watermelons. I feel like this is something from like some Greek odyssey or from some Greek epic. Like, just what the fuck is this a reference to? It's like, is this like obscure Japanese symbolism I've never heard of before? I would be curious when watermelons were introduced in Japan. I, I don't I don't know. Because they're definitely not indigenous. It can't be, right? got and they have to stop it they go to gorilla high to find out it has a giant sentient head on it built using parts from nasa and chagacha defeats it the whole town celebrated the birthday of the new president of narare sayun khan high school kabu kentamaru kabu is punishing idiot delinquents by butchering them and making ramen out of them i seriously think that's all that happens yeah (laughs) though there was a really cool flashback about a bird that looked really badass and he was the best character in this manga there was a badass pigeon with like scars on it eyes looked really cool it's a punished pigeon pun yeah literally punished pigeon so what were your first impressions oh god oh my god what the fuck is even happening this is fucking insane it's this is so hard to follow it's so fucking busy it's so confusing I, like like i went to read a chapter of bobo Bo after this just to compare and oh my god bobo Bo is so much more focused than this yeah you don't think you would ever say the phrase bo bo is more focused than this, but it is so much more. I mean, this is like in our Build King, where he just fucking lost his touch after making his big series. bo bo will take, actually take its time finishing out a joke so that you are able to follow and get the joke. This series does not. This is like, we're going to throw three jokes into as many panels. None of them are expanded upon, and so you don't get them. It's a mess. It, it honestly it was hard to just look at it because the art is so dense. It's so fucking busy. 
why is it like this? It's just it's so much more effort to have drawn it like this. I was just gonna say this is not an this is not a situation where he like took the easy route. He clearly put a ton of hours into drawing all of these panels. There's so much that's going on. Like, you can tell he wasn't phoning it in because by the fact is he canceled it before he actually got any feedback. He just was eight chapters in and said, this isn't it. He was proud of this work. Well, oh, so he canceled. You mean he wasn't proud of this work? I No, no. I, or I mean, like, he cared about the quality of this series because otherwise he wouldn't have told Shonen Jump we need to stop doing this. He's proud of his own work. I, I, like, I respect yeah. that. I always respect it when a creator's just like, I'm sorry. This is not my best shit. Yeah. I can't have this keep going. This is I can do better. Let me let me get rid of this. Sorry. I respect that. You know, yeah, I, I respect that a lot, too. It's just a shame it was necessary because we've seen our cases like Tricks Dedicated Witches where he called it quits when he didn't need to. Yeah. Also, David, I would like to say uh, one of your notes is, is this Dadaist? And David, not everything that looks bad is Dadaist. That is not <laughs> what Dadaism <laughs> is. I know. I just wanted to say that. OK, I mean, this is like what maximalist. Yeah, uh, I've heard the term horror vacui, where you're just... Now you're just making things up. It's a term for when you're just terrified of having any blank space at all. Okay, Mr. Art School. Yeah, that's a real term. Yeah, it's just busy as fuck. Yeah. That's the main word. It's busy and cluttered. Also, the plot makes zero sense. I honestly don't know what's going on. It kind of feels like he mashed together multiple chapters because there's like not really a flow to anything that happens in this first chapter. That's what I'm saying. Go back, read the first chapter of Bobo Bo. As ridiculous as it is, you can follow it pretty fucking easily. Like there's one plot. Here it's like there's yeah, there's like 50 plots and only one of them kind of matters. There's so little actual substance to this manga. Also, David, you pointed this out, too. But like there are just, just these brief moments where it's like there's almost funny jokes in here. Yeah, there are like small kind of moments where it's funny. Like, honestly, my favorite moment in the whole chapter is where they're talking about how NASA built this thing with parts. And then Masoto's just like, curse you, NASA. I'll never forgive the NASA scientists. I'll never forgive NASA. Like, that was actually pretty funny, I guess. Or like how he was like talking to his like leg muscles to run faster. And that's like a joke that also was in Mashal and Mashal. That's a good example. Mashal did that joke way funnier. But like that was the root of a joke that I know could have been funny. That's what's kind of sad about this. Like you see glimmers where it's like, this is a guy who is skilled. Yeah, this is a guy who can make this. But instead, we get this chaos. There are moments where I felt like this is the Sakura Tetsu Taiwan we have at home, you know? Yeah. Where it's just that that chaos. But like that had like some level of substance to it. What a fucking ending that manga had. Oh, man. Same thing where the guy was just like, ah, I'm canceling this. This ain't working. This ain't working. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah, but this is going to make Sakura to Taiwa and look like Time Paradox Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, Jordan, I guess we don't have to say what you read in our 10 chapters because there are not another 10 chapters. Would you read the rest of this series, David? Fuck no. No, me neither. The series is bad. God, I'm so glad it's short, though. Oh, yeah. There was ever a time for it to only be eight chapters. Yeah. Uh, why is that, David? Because the author gave up because it was terrible. Oh, I was just going to say, why are you reading a short manga this time? Oh, yeah, we're reading a short manga because I'm going to New Zealand in less than a week. So we are recording our chibi in our main the same weekend. Woo! And, and why are you going to New Zealand, David? Because I got married. That's right. It's David's honeymoon. He's going to Middle Earth. Yep. And I've been watching Lord of the Rings where Rachel may be the last person born before the movies to have zero idea of anything that occurs in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> She did not know what an orc was. None of the lines. My friend was in disbelief. It was like, you shall not pass. You have my axe. Second breakfast. None of it. She had zero fucking idea that any of those lines had any cultural significance. Oh, my God. It's very, very impressive. That's amazing. She legitimately fought. She genuinely did not know that Gandalf was going to come back as Gandalf the White. <laughs> like, that is the level of her not knowing anything about this. Wow. Right? Wow, that's kind of amazing. That's kind of great. I'm happy for her. Imagine there was like a psychic signal put in Lord of the Rings and she was actually the last person that could defeat the alien force that was using it. And I've just ruined humanity's last chance to survive. Oh, God, I, I kind of wish I could forget Lord of the Rings just so I could watch it again. I was. Yeah, I'm watching the extended edition and it is kind of interesting. Watch it where it's like, I don't think that was in the movie when I watched it. So that's a fun part of watching the extended editions. I think I've only seen the extended editions. Really? Yeah. You never saw it in theaters? 
it took me years and years to actually watch this series. But even mm. still, I picked up on a lot of it through osmosis. Yeah, that's I don't I truly do not understand how she never she didn't know what an orc was. Wow. Anyway, Jordan, what do you think will happen next? I think Chagacha is uh, his high school's president. Mm -hmm. I think there will be one female character. I thought you were going to say there will be one funny joke. <laughs> there, I think there will be a couple mild, mildly funny ones, but it doesn't justify the length of the series. I think we will see at least one person get eaten. Wow. <gasps> How about you? Those are some guesses. Minor, I think the series will not even be able to make fun of how fast they are canceled. Mm. I think that Masoto will be completely useless. Definitely. And I think the big bad won't be the school president, but the man he actually works for. And as a bonus guess, I think if this had gone on for long enough, I think Obama would have shown up. So close, David. So close. God. <laughs> Talking about the chaos testicles. God. <laughs> well, literally, like, what, like, one or two days later after it got canceled, Obama was elected? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, what's your power word, David? This series is just, it apes his prior material. It's just ape shit. <laughs> just fucking a bunch of monkey business, you know? Yeah. How about you, Jordan? So it's funny you mentioned Obama because mine is chaos. The chaos testicles. I really perked up when I said chaos testicles. <laughs> I don't know why. But seriously, this the series is just pure chaos. Like you're just reading it, and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? Right? Like that plot summary does not explain how impossible it is to follow. There was like a Kanikuman reference in the first couple pages, too. Like where the Saiyans are flying like F-35s and then an alien cat flew onto their onto their windshield and we're like, man, this is just like the Akuma Chojin. That all happens. <laughs> right. That is stuff that happens in this manga chapter. What a life we live in. Yeah. All right. I'm done talking about the series. Why don't we get to the Q&A? Yeah. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who submits their questions. You can submit them on the Shonen Flop Discord, where we get priority to those who haven't asked a question before, had a question answered in a long time, or patrons. Starting off with Dude Rocks, we have, if you could own one mythical animal, what would it be? It'll be tame, trained, and friendly, so if you choose a dragon, it won't bite your arm off. Also, we're going with Pokemon anime Ponita rules, where if it's a fire, a lightning, or elemental creature... Did you just call Ponyta Ponyta? What? Are, oh my God, Ponyta. Ponyta. Yeah. What? Oh my. Oh my God. So essentially, if the if it is inherently made out of a dangerous substance, it will not hurt you. So what would you pick, Jordan? My favorite Pokemon are canine. No. Um. No. Uh. I would. I would get a Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. He's a big bird friend. It's also kind of a cat because it's a lion, and he can fly me anywhere. I would have a good. I would be good friends with this griffin. That sounds really fun. I mean, I already have a goblin dog. You could hug him. You could Aww. hug him. I already have a goblin dog, so I guess for a second animal. Oh, I. I mean, I have three cats, but like, yeah. Maybe it would be fun to just have like a phoenix. You know, a little bird guy hanging out. Yeah. Couldn't die. Y you'd never have to mourn your bird because you just couldn't die. That is true. Your pet will never die. That's kind of nice. Yep. Next up from Redblade, if you caused a time paradox and had to pick a new series to be the world's One Piece, what currently finished Shonen Jump series would you pick to be going on as long as One Piece has? Ooh. That's a really interesting question. On one hand, Yu Yu Hakusho really could have gone on. Like... Way longer, yeah. Tagashi definitely quit. Yeah, that's the thing. Tagashi, like, I guess that's the series. Mm-hmm. Because I guess in this um, in this parallel world, the idea is that the mangaka had the work ethic and drive and like a desire to keep working on it that Oda has. Yeah. So I guess that's my answer. I'm kind of imagining a thousand chapters of Fire Punch. I probably would have said Hunter Hunter, but Hunter Hunter is technically not over. Yeah, it's not. You know, hmm, I'm trying to think something that wasn't popular. I, I do actually wonder. You know, what? actually, fuck it. High School Family. Let's see a thousand chapters. Of that. <laughs> I definitely I really wanted Gomez for school president. Or I think that would have happened if it hadn't gotten canceled. 20 years of High School Family. Yes. And then college. Fam I already knew how the sequel was going to work out or he goes to college and it's his grandparents are there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up from Spike. If you could end any one mangaka's career, jump or not. Oh, man, Jordan, I know who I would pick. Watsky. Yeah. Fucking pedophile. I knew we were both going to say Watsky. That's why I put that question in, because I figured we'd both say that. Yeah, we were both going to say that. Because it's like, he should not have a career. I'm sorry. He should be in jail. Yeah, if you're if you're a pedophile, you should not go back to your job where you make entertainment for children. Dan Schneider. He's the Dan Schneider of manga. Schneider. 
Dan Schneider. Next up from ZZ Digital. Prisoners Dilemma Time. Choose at the same time, please. Trust or betray. If you both choose trust, you can only read decent to mid-quality manga ever again. If you both betray, you can only read mid to bad manga. If one betrays, the betrayer can read excellent manga, but the one that is betrayed will only ever be able to read School Judgment. Speaking of pedophiles. On three, let's both just say it. Okay. Three, three two, two, one. one. But trust. Right. Fuck off. <laughs> I am not reading School Judgment. Fuck that. If you had said trust, we could still read mid quality. You could have read Black Clover for the rest but of your life. But now I read excellent manga. Yeah, well, you can read these And nuts. you have to read School Judgment, and I never have to. Fuck. <laughs> now I read Chainsaw Man. <laughs> Yeah, finally from Pineapple Boy. Do you have an anime or form of media that's your go-to comfort show? Something that you can watch or listen to a hundred times and never get tired of it. Oh, and then they say, for me, it's podcasts and there are episodes I've listened to hundreds of times at this point. Thanks for making a great pod to add to the Aww. list. Oh, that's real sweet of you to say. So Jordan, what, what, like, what's something you feel you could watch over and over again? I have a bunch of things like that. Right now, what, I'm, what I've been doing is re-watching um, Ben Saint's explanation of the lore of Mega Man. It is eight hours long. A lot of people might not know this because I don't think I've said it much on the uh, podcast, if ever. I love Mega Man. I am a huge Mega Man fan. A mega fan, if you will. Mega Maniac. A Mega Maniac, which actually used to be my uh, email. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it. That's why that was my email. But aside from that, there are a bunch of like really long YouTube videos I put on. I listened to the podcast episode one. There are episodes I've listened to a billion fucking times. <laughs> it's more like episode 100 at this Honestly, point. Honestly, yeah. How about you, David? So I always watch, love watching Avengers Endgame. Um, really? Or just a lot of the MC movies. Also, Gurren Lagann. I have seen that show maybe eight or so times, and I was so pumped when I watched it in movies. Oh, God. Or when, I, when it came to theater, I rented an entire row of the movie theater. <laughs> God, what a great time that was. For me, rather than Gurren Lagann, it, it would be G Gundam. I watched G Gundam. Hell yeah. I love G Gundam. Also, one of my favorite manga to reread is I Shall 21. Oh. That is such a fun read. I really need to reread it because I adore that. It's just so much fun to read. Hell yeah, you do. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for questions. I want to say, Jordan, thank you so much for all your hard work on the show and editing the GB episodes. And thank you for all the stuff that you do, David. <laughs> Jordan's like, I'll figure out what that is at some point. Oh, I also watch Civi 11's review I of Dai Katana all the time. But anyway, thank you for everything you do on the show. Oh, no problem. I love you. Oh, props to Shannon for the awesome cover art. You can find her online at Illuminati. Thanks to Dylan for assistance with editing. Find his podcast, Anime Out of Context, at AnimeOutOfContext.com. Thanks to Tucker and Maxi B for assistance with pronunciation, translation, other miscellaneous research. Find us on Twitter, Shonen Flopcast, Tumblr, Shonen Dash Flop, our website, ShonenFlop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast. And come join the Shonen Flop Discord as we talked about how you submit your six word summary, submit your questions. It's a good time. If enjoying the podcast and want to help us keep going, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Wouldn't be able to keep the show running without their support. Jordan, what are are we going to be dropping in March for our wonderful patrons? We are covering Nisa. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't remember the name of the family, but it's Family Secrets. Fuck. There you go. It's Jordan said Family Secrets. And who is our guest on it? Uh, no, it is fuck. It is not Family Secrets. It is the Ichinose family's Deadly Sins featuring Crimson Rogue. We are finishing up that series. No, we are not. No, we are not. We have one more episode of it left. Because I fucked up and read the read the end of the series, so now I'm all confused. This is our second of three episodes covering the Ichinose family's deadly sins. There you go. There we go. Fuck. And you can find us at patreon.com slash shonenflop. I also want to read some of our wonderful patrons out. Giving our big thank you to our dolphin dad's way of Glornak. Rachel, my wonderful wife. She is having a great time in Florida right now. Me and Revular are dearly missing her. Sean awoke my slumbering womanhood in his double tall loin latte Starbucks. I cried. Oh my God. Moving on down to the Ravioli tier where you get weekly photos of the little goblin dog. I forget if I said, but I was playing The Last of Us 2. A dog started barking and she just watched me play that game for an hour 20 minutes. <laughs> we have Chris, Eva, Lady T. Matt T and Trevor Schechner thank you all so much moving on down to our king of the forest we have 090Z Bandit Stu my girlfriend Chad Mason Bling Bang Bang Jacob Andrew Galloway Kirby Munt Marty Max Baker Riley 3.14 Sarah Hydra T. Wolfwood and Tommy Boy moving on down to our Galactic Ball Federation officers we have a mid-sized sedan Andy's Islands Aura Blah Moo Moo Brandon M David Ackerson Dennis James Moan Drago Drew Dylan Nigel Fax Flashcard Man Generic Man Hans Heavy Metal Hermit Crab Keanu Manly P. Hall Marabara Matt Matt 
Matt, Mike, Obscure Reference, ah, good one, Resident Warhammer Nerd, Ryan Chizinski, Scott Fischler, Silly Rookie, Simping for Sent by Ash, Staghorn, Taper Clip, The Real Jory, Tucker Watley, Wright, and ZZ Digital, and a big thank you as well to our Beast Children. Yes, I love you all very much. You are all my children. You're all my Beast Children, all of you, actually. And uh, yeah, also go listen to Mission Ignition. Oh, that's right. Whoa! I just stole Jordan's line. Oh, no. Because he betrayed da- me. Oh, no. David, don't do that. Oh. Yeah, no, absolutely don't. That podcast where Jordan never says where you actually can find it. <laughs> yeah, God. Jordan's like, this entire time for four years, I've never actually said where you can find Mission. Yeah, because David, most of the time, when you want to find a podcast, you're like, oh, let me type the name of the podcast into anywhere where I get podcasts, and there it is. So, I, I mean, you don't really need to all the time. Like, I mean, we do it here to be thorough. <laughs> but like you could just type in mission ignition fucking anywhere listen your portrayal really broke my heart you know what i'm done with you goodbye jordan <laughs> no i'm just kidding thank you so much for listening tune in next monday for our full episode on chat uh, changed i don't fucking Ch- care no Chad- one cares Ch- the chat Ch- changes featuring amber from the school tenders podcast this has been jordan this has been david hey, you say so loud, david say it keep on flopping floppers bye bye